In this video, we're going to look at the temperature dependence of enthalpy and the enthalpy that occurs during phase transitions. So in the previous video, we defined the constant pressure heat capacity, Cp, dependent on the temperature T, as the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. This was important because most chemical processes occur at constant pressure rather than at constant volume. So if we want to find the enthalpy or the difference in enthalpy between two temperatures, so enthalpy at T2 relative to enthalpy at T1, what we can do is take our constant pressure heat capacity, derivative of H with respect to T, multiply that times the differential of temperature, dt, and then integrate that from T1 to T2. So we just do this integral of heat capacity over the whole range, and we will get our difference in enthalpy there being this derivative there. Okay, but this is only true if there is no phase change in between T1 and T2. So if there's a phase change between T1 and T2, like a vaporization, a sublimation, a uh, melting, anything like that, then this will not be valid and we'll have to uh, have some new formula which extends to that case. So what we're going to have to use in that case is if we have an enthalpy change during a phase transition, and generally for thermodynamic quantities there are changes during certain types of processes. We do this delta, then subscript, then the quantity. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this notation, but it exists, so I'm going to use it. So we have delta transition of H is equal to, and that will be the heat which is, oh, that's very bad, the heat which is input to a system during a constant pressure phase change or phase transition. So the heat that we have to input into a substance in order to get it to a, undergo a phase transition is this uh, enthalpy change of that transition. So let's make a little graph here of this heat capacity and also of the enthalpy. Okay, so we're going to have two graphs here. On door number one here, this first graph, we are going to have the molar enthalpy as a function of temperature minus molar enthalpy at t equals zero. And on this second one here, let's do the molar constant volume heat capacity, CPT. That's just the heat capacity divided by the number of moles, making it an, making it an intensive property. And we're going to have a couple marks here along the way. We're going to have one for the melting temperature, Tm, temperature of melting or temperature of fusion, whichever you prefer and then one for the boiling or vaporization temperature again whichever you prefer so we have solid liquid gas solid liquid gas okay so our enthalpy is going to start uh, down at zero because that's what we defined it to be relative to h of zero and then it's going to go up for a while up for a while then we have the enthalpy of fusion from melting it and it goes straight up then it's going to go up for a while up for a while up for a while then we hit the boiling temperature or the vaporization temperature and we have to go straight up for a while again uh, just deleted the whole thing we have to go straight up for a while again I'm not very good at going straight up there and then it's going to keep going again and so our heat capacity during this time is going to be some low but finite amount then it hits the melting temperature becomes uh, becomes infinite for a second and then becomes some whatever the new slope is over here and then becomes discontinuous again becomes whatever the slope is over here uh, this isn't for any particular substance or any particular 
trend. I'm just picking kind of arbitrary values for all of these here. But we can mark in some things that we want to see. This would be the delta VAP H enthalpy of vaporization. This over here will be delta fuse H, the enthalpy of fusion or melting. Those are equivalent statements there. Okay, so let's say we start off at some temperature T, which is greater than the melting temperature. So we're going to heat from this part of the curve onward. So we want to find the enthalpy for a temperature uh, as it as it depends on on the temperature here beyond this transition. All right, so we're going to have the enthalpy at our temperature minus the enthalpy at t equals zero. That is going to equal the integral from zero up to Tm, or T of fusion. I'm going to make sure that's a capital T of Cp of T dt. And then plus the enthalpy we gain during that phase transition, delta fuse H. And then plus our final, we're in this part of the curve here, plus our final part of that, which goes from the melting temperature up to T. That'll be Cp of T prime dt prime. I'm using the prime index there because we've already got a t there. So it's bad form to integrate uh, something that you already have in your limits. So I'm just making it a prime so we have this dummy variable to integrate with respect to. So to go from absolute zero to our current temperature, we have to get the enthalpy all along there during that first integral. And then the enthalpy of the fusion or the melting we have to input a bunch of heat in order to melt our substance and then from the melting temperature up to our final temperature whatever we fall along this curve here and if we continued on past the vaporization temperature we'd have to include the enthalpy of vaporization as well so typically the delta fusion H and delta vaporization H enthalpy of vaporization or fusion, you generally have to overcome intermolecular forces which are keeping these molecules together or whatever type of compound it is. So generally this is going to be greater than zero. So these are generally endothermic processes. They are absorbing heat in order to undergo this phase transition. If you hold a piece of ice in your hand, your hand will start to get cold because the water in the ice is pulling the heat from your hand into itself. It's absorbing that heat in order to overcome its uh, enthalpy of fusion there. So that can absorb enough heat to melt and become water. And if you hold that ice in your hand long enough, it will indeed become water, uh, usually fairly quickly. And to finish off, let's list some examples of some of these types of phase transitions which you might come across for these different subscripts in our uh, different enthalpies here. So we of course have vaporization or boiling, as I said. We have fusion, which is melting. Sublimation, sub would be the little subscript there, going from a solid to a gas. And you could also have things like mixing or adsorption to a surface, various things like that. Or it might just be a fairly special case and they just use the general uh, TRS for transition. So those are the types of enthalpies of phase transitions which you are likely to come across in your chemistry studies.